Okay, we're going to talk about uh, negative integrals and areas between curves, uh, section H11C uh, and H11H. <clears throat> okay, so um, use your graphing dis display calculator to evaluate the definite integral. So basically we're doing an integral from 0 to 1 of x squared minus 1. So what we're going to do, how do we do this on the calculator? You're going to hit y equals, and then um, y, in y1, I'm going to type in x squared minus 1, OK? And then I'm going to hit second trace. And then I want to do the integral, so I'm going to go down to number 7, which is integral. I hit Enter. And now I have to have my lower limit, which we're going to pick 0. Enter. And now I have to put in my upper limit, which we're going to pick 1. And now it, it's that little baby shaded area is between 0 and 1, and we get this value of negative 0.66, repeating. Okay, same process. I do that for between uh, 1 and 2 and between 0 and 2. Now, if, if I'm the area below the curve is negative. The area above the curve comes out positive on the calculator. So if I do the area between here and here, it just adds the negative and the positive number together. <clears throat> so here's our sketch. You might want to hit pause. So, um, okay, what? Why is the area bounded by the curve and the x-axis uh, of the line x equals zero and x equals two not equal to this? So the area uh, between here and here is not. It's not equal to that because we've got a negative er a value with this integral and we have a positive value with this integral. So because the area between 0 and 1, this area here comes out negative. Okay, hit pause if you need to. Okay, so question C. What do you notice about the definite integral when a function is below the x-axis? So when it's below the x-axis, then um, we get a negative value. Okay, so how do we prevent this from becoming negative? So what we do is we have to use absolute value when I when I um, type in my equation. So if I type in absolute value, so to get absolute value on the calculator, you're going to have alpha window and one apps. So if I went back to this graph here, so I'm going to type in alpha window and then one for apps and now I have absolute value okay let's clear everything alpha window one for math apps and now I'm going to type in um, x squared minus one graph. And so this part here that was below the x-axis is now going to be above the x-axis. And here it'll just look like this. So this little bitty part that was below the x-axis is now above the x-axis because we did the absolute value. And so now if I do the integral from 0 to 2, so second trace, seven for integral. And now if my lower limit is zero and my upper limit is two, it gives me that that area is two. So what basically what's just happened is um, it, this didn't come out negative since we used absolute value and it actually uh, calculated the area underneath both parts and it took both parts into consideration. Okay, so um, 
Um, so basically when you've got values below the x-axis, um, uh, we're going to need to be using absolute value is what's essential here. Okay. Um, thank you for those in class who helped me figure out that I had made a mistake here. I had accidentally, because my graph was between 0 and 3, I accidentally did my integral. In fact, this is, picture is wrong. It's only supposed to be to here. No. So it's only supposed to be this part. Actually, there. Uh, how do I hide that? Okay. Well, that's a good thing to do. Okay. So because we're finding the area bounded between 0 and 2, so between 0 and 2. So I've got this graph here. Um, so if I want to look at this curve, it goes be from 0 to 2. Um, if I want to find the area, like I said before, you have to use absolute value. And if you do it between 0 and 2, you're going to find this area. You can use the same process we just did. Okay, first one here. So sketch uh, y equals sine 2x. So remember that period is equal to 2 pi over b. This is what we did a while back. And um, so my b value is 2, because this is the b value. So my period is going to be 2 pi over 2, since b is 2. And then so my period is equal to pi. So between 0 and pi, I do one complete period. Okay. So find the area of the region bounded by the curve from the following <coughs> between x and 0.5, um, 2 and 3, and 0 and 2.5. So basically what I did. Um, Absolute value, so second alpha window, absolute value, sine of 2x. Okay. Okay, so now I'm going to find the integral between 0 and 0.5. And I get this area here. Okay, and you can see how the sign, um, it's made all of the, this part here, it's moved it up here. Okay, and that's what's happened on this graph. Okay, so check your answers. All right. Sketch the curve y equals 4 divided by x minus 2 minus 2. So if you type that into your calculator, 4 divided by parentheses x minus 2 and then minus 2. Okay, if you're not sure how uh, to plot this, often what I do is I'll do um, a second graph to get a table, and um, let's start that off at zero. So if I go to second graph and get a table, I can get some values to help me plot some points to draw this graph. Now notice we at two we have an error. That's because uh, if I plug in 2 here, my, I'm going to have 0 in the denominator, so we have a vertical asymptote at x equals 2. Um, we're going to have a horizontal asymptote at negative 2. OK. 
Okay. Explain why it's not possible to calculate uh, the uh, integral from 0 to 3. We can't calculate this integral because between between 0 and 3 we've got this um, undefined period where um, at x equals 2. All right, question C. Find the area of the curve bounded by the region and the x-axis between 3 and 4. So um, I'll just do one of these here. So between 3 and 4, let's hit second trace. We're going to do the integral there, number 7. OK, so we're going to the lower bound is 3. All right, enter. The upper bound is 4, enter. And then there's my answer, 0.7725. This is what we got here. Okay, we do the same thing between four and six. Second trace. Oh, I can't see what I'm doing. Seven. Enter. Lower bound is four. Upper bound is six. And it's this part over here. And it says negative one point two two. So if I've got this part right here, which is this red part right here, and I've got this part right here, which is this other red part here below the x-axis, if I add those together, then I'm going to get this area here. Okay. So this is another way, if I didn't want to do absolute value, I could just find this area on the left and this area on the right, which is below the x-axis, and then just change the sign on that one and add it together. You'd need to do it that way if you weren't using the calculator. So, Okay, area between two curves. So um, to find the area between two curves, I need to figure out the area above the curve and subtract the area below the curve. So, um, so let's look at this picture here. So the area above the curve what the heck? Okay. So looking let's look at this picture. F of x dx is this whole part right here. Right? And area of g of x dx is this guy here. So if I take the yellow area minus the blue area, we're going to get this leftover area that's right there. Okay. So let's do some examples. <clears throat> okay. So I need to subtract one from the other. But in this example here, um, y equals sine x is, uh, is this red graph right here. That looks like a sine wave to me. And um, cosine x, y equals cosine x, that's this blue graph here. So just like what we did before, we have to subtract the two. But in this case, we need to do absolute value. And the reason we're doing the absolute value between the two is um, sometimes the sine x graph is above. And then over here, the cosine graph is up above. So if I do the absolute value, when I do my subtraction, then it's going to give me um, uh, the, the higher one minus the lower one. Okay. So um, now if I want to find the area between the curve and the y-axis, um, 
Notice it says dy and not dx. Doo -doo 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 -doo. So what we have to do is, in order to if change my function to dy, we're going to have to use the inverse function. Okay, we're going to have to find the inverse function of h of x. And I'm going to show you an example of that right now. <coughs> Okay, so here I've got, um, we want to find the area bounded by the y-axis, and it's from, and y equals 4, that's this line right here, and the curve and the y-axis. So here's the curve, here's the line y equals 4, and here's the y-axis. So um, this shape right here, you can see, is so if I'm going between 0 and 4, if I wanted to change this so that I can type it into the calculator, because we're used to doing it between 0 and 4 this way, like my red function here. So I need to find the function for the inverse of this function. So the first thing I'm going to do is find the inverse. So we st our equation is y equals x squared, isn't it? So I have y equals x squared. So to find the inverse, I replace the y with the x and x with the y. And then I can take the square root of both sides, and I get y equals um, a square root of x. And so basically, we can say my inverse function is equal to the square root of x. Okay, And so now, I can do the integral from 0 to 4 of the square root of x dx. And that's going to give us what we want. Okay, So the, what they wrote here might have confused you a little bit. So what we've done is we've, we've um, changed my graph into an inverse function, and I'm uh, inverse is when you switch the x with the y and the y with the x. And since we're bounding it on the y-axis, we need to do the inverse function so that we can put this into our calculator. I hope I explained that right. Please let me know if I need to explain it differently. Um, so let's type in this equation: square root of x. So square root x. Okay, second trace. So we're going to do the integral from 0 to 4. The lower bound is 0. Upper bound is 4. And it tells me that area is 5.3 repeating. And that's what they got here. Okay. Let's look at our answers to the next part here. <clears throat> okay. Let's look at this part here. And from here to here. So what I we needed this point here 1.5. So this one was a tricky one. I remember when I did this earlier. So I need to figure out this point here because what I'm trying to do is I need to figure out this area right here. And then I also needed to figure out this area of this triangle here. So, um, so the blue area is bound between this curve, which is x squared, and the x-axis, right? So if I do the antiderivative from 0 to 1.6 of x squared, I get this, and if I do the antiderivative from 
1.56 to 4, uh, um, and this using that equation, 4 minus x. I get this. Now, how did I get the 1.56? Okay, that's what's important. So, um, we type in the two equations. That's what I did. One equation is x squared, and the other equation is 4 minus x. And if I graph those, we have a parabola and our straight line. And I need to figure out that intersection. Whoa. So to figure out the intersection, second trace, go down to intersect, I hit enter, and I need to arrow close to it so I get the correct intersection and not, not this other one over here. So I've arrowed close to it, first curve, enter, second curve, enter, guess, enter, and my intersection is 1.56. Okay. Okay, so here's another one where it's bound by the um, y-axis. Okay, this picture, the scale of this one is totally not right, so this picture is misleading. Um, so find the area of the shaded region bound by y over 3x and the y-axis. Okay, so once again, if, I, if we're bounding it with the y-axis, I first need to find the inverse function. So if I've got y equals 3 over x, so I'm going to switch the y and turn it into x, and switch the x and turn it into y. Um, but, you know, this is interesting. I could cross-multiply and switch it around, and I still get the same thing. This is symmetrical. So... Um, and we're doing it between 1 and 3. And there we go. <laughs> Excuse me. Sorry about that. OK. This one, 3 and 4, is explained extremely well by Professor Dave. So I'd like you to watch Professor Dave. You just type in YouTube, go to Professor Dave Explains, area between two curves, and he just goes over this amazingly well. Okay, and here's the work. Hit pause if you need to. And here's the work on the last one, and once again, Professor Dave explains it extremely well. And uh, there you go.